So now we're happy, we can actually go around setting up a base map for the ECU that we've decided to use. So if we go back to the, the main setup screen, which is setup main setup, we can go back to the engine tab and start at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is an RB26 has been stroked out to 2.8 litres. So we can't just use the default engine capacity, which we'd fill in here, which would be 2000, roughly 2,600. We're going to have to find out what our new uh, engine displacement is. So I know that the engine we're doing is a 86 mil bore and a 79 mil stroke. And I know it's a six cylinder engine. So what we can do is get our calculator out quick. And if we take uh, pi times the radius of the cylinder in centimeters, so an 86 mil would be a 43 mil radius, which is 4.3 centimeters, times that by 4.3 centimeters squared gives us the area of a circle times by 7.9 centimeters or a 79 mil stroke times by six cylinders gives us 2753 cc's. Now we want to be as accurate as possible with all the information we're entering into the ECU because any inaccuracies will affect your tuning later and can lead to some very odd results. So we'll now put 2753 into the engine displacement. Next is the RB26 only a six cylinder engine. And now you'll see we've got some errors because we told the ECU it's only got six cylinders when it was expecting eight on the base map. So the next thing to do is adjust our firing order. So I've double checked the RB26 firing order. It is a one, five, three, six, two, and four. If we hit apply, we'll see some of the errors on this page have gone away. Uh, it is an even firing engine, which means the in all the cylinders are evenly spaced apart. If you're doing an odd engine, I have never come across one yet, where the cylinders for some reason are not evenly spaced apart in terms of crankshaft degrees, you will need to tick this box and fill in all the angles. However, I've never seen that before in a real world scenario. Uh, we've still got errors on the fuel then, so let's go over to our fuel tab and just scroll down and the reason is we've got eight injectors assigned in a sequential mode per cylinder but we only have six cylinders so if we now change this to six click apply that will fix that error interestingly as well if we now go back to the IO report we will find that we've now got some extra pins available here so ignition 7 and 8 and injection 7 and 8 can be reused on a 2500 series ECU for certain other purposes, which gives us some more I.O. to play with. Before we get to our fuel and ignition tab any further, let's go back one to our trigger tab, because without this we can't do anything. The ECU needs to know at all times the position and speed of the engine in order to know when to even fire the injectors and ignition coils. So the way it's done on Haltech is there's typically two wires from the ECU, or should I say groups of wires. One is known as the trigger wires, and the other is the home wires. Which of these wires you use depend on the type of sensors and the type of trigger setup you're running. So typically most engines will have a trigger and a home. The trigger is usually your crank position and the home is usually a start position or cam position that says which of the engine cycles you're currently on. If you do not have a home signal you cannot run a sequential system uh, unless you have some sort of trigger system on your cam only with a missing tooth, but that's pretty rare. Um, typical engines will have a 60 minus 2 or a 24 minus tooth wheel on the trigger side on the crank, and usually a single or dual home which will tell the ECU which cycle it's on. However, in the RB26, we have a cast sit disc sit um, system which runs purely on the cam. Uh, the cast disc itself has 360 teeth for the trigger and it has six different sized teeth for the home signal. So if we go and find Nissan and we'll find RB26, you'll see as I said just said, the helps it says on cam, six evenly spaced windows, all windows size are unique so you can identify which of the six cylinders coming around next, as well as 360 degrees teeth spaced evenly. 
and I'd argue that actually that's backwards. The trigger really is the 360 and the home is really that. So that might be a bug in the software. The next thing to set up is the offset, which is the TDC offset from where the sensor sits in relation to where the actual top dead centre of the first cylinder would be. I know this for an RB26 it's 110 degrees. If you didn't know this, you would disable your injectors in the fuel tab here and you would then crank the engine using a timing light and adjust this value up and down until your timing light would come up with the ignition angle which you've locked on the ignition tab here in lock mode always on either 0 or 10 degrees. If you're advanced or retired you will increase and remove the trigger angle once you've done that, you can then use a cam marker to see if you're 360 degrees out. If so, you would then add or remove 360 degrees from this value until your timing light shows that your ignition angle on the crankshaft is where you expect it to be and your time mark on your camshaft is where you expect it to be. Once that's done, you could then re-enable your injectors and disable your lock timing. Next thing to do is filters. I try and avoid using any filters on these as I can. Um, generally, you shouldn't need them unless you've got an, some sort of bad signal or issues, but you're really better off replacing your wiring or investigating those issues than trying to filter things. I know this ECU can quite happily handle all 360 teeth over 9,000 revs without an issue. The only time I've had an issue, I've had to enable a strong pull-up resistor on both of these for an RB26 to, to ensure the signal was reliable at high revs but other than that if these you can handle the RB26 signal it should be able to handle any signal you throw at it. The next thing to do is know whether you're using a Hall effect or a reluctor sensor. So a Hall effect is a magnetic sensor that has a power, ground and a signal where a reluctant sensor basically induces its own voltage into the wire and uses a separate ground and signal wire. Um, you will need to look at your sensors to work out which ones you need but generally speaking a Hall effect will use three wires and a reluctor will use two so looking at your sensor will give you a good giveaway straight away. In this case we're going to use a Hall effect. We're going to use a rising edge because we want to capture the, the event as it comes as the voltage goes high on the signal because as the tooth comes past we want to see the voltage signal go up and trigger on a rising edge. 